What's up everyone? I'm gonna show you how to work with live market data. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do crypto since it's one of the ones that's still open right now. And we're gonna be using the polygon.io uh, suite of tools. And it's a couple of packages that I've built for Python. So those of you that are interested with working with market data a little bit more closely, we're gonna do crypto in this one. Then I'll show you the other four markets in subsequent videos. But basically, um, I've made a new folder here called Polygon Demo. Um, you'll wanna make a new folder and you're gonna to want to make a clean environment for this and you're gonna want a .env file which is gonna hold your Polygon key. Now Polygon does offer a free tier. If you want the WebSocket clusters that I'm gonna be demonstrating in this uh, video, then you will want to sign up for one of their packages. Good news is if you do sign up and use the code FUDSTOP, all caps, F-U-D-S-T-O-P at checkout, you'll get a 10% discount. Now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna assume at this point you already have Python installed, and I use Anaconda uh, on my end, so I'm gonna go ahead and open the Anaconda prompt. As an administrator, I'm going to run this command, conda create dash n, we're gonna call this poly demo, and we're gonna make it Python 3.11. And this is gonna create us our new environment. And we're gonna hit yes. And it's a plus to have Postgres SQL database installed as well in your system because there is database integration with this as well. Okay, so we have our new environment and now we're gonna activate it with conda activate polygon demo. I'm sorry, conda activate poly demo. Now that we have this active, we're gonna install our packages. And it's only two things that you're, you'll need, or actually really just one thing, pip install fudstop. And it's gonna take a while because there is a lot of stuff in there. While that's downloading, um, you're gonna want to go ahead and go over to the Polygon website and go to their GitHub. And in the examples category, click in there and then go to WebSocket. And then we're gonna click the async version. And we're just going to copy this script and paste it into our folder, or our projects folder, just like this. And basically what this is gonna do, um, we have to wait for these packages to install. But once that's all done, this is how we connect to the uh, stock market, right? But we, we want to do crypto because the stock market's closed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say from polygon.websocket import crypto, or let's do, oh, I guess we gotta wait for this to install. Uh, the FUDSTOP package contains a lot of stuff that's gonna be useful for data analysis and market uh, stuff like that. So once this is done, we'll continue on. Um, as far as your ENV file, what you're gonna wanna do is to get your API key in the, in the file, do import OS and from .env, import load.env. Again, it's not showing up because I have not installed the packages yet. Actually, let me select the interpreter, uh, which is gonna be polydemo. Let me refresh this. Polydemo right here at the bottom. And it's still installing. Like I said, it's quite an extensive package. But from .env, import load.env, and we're gonna call load.env, and then we're going to define our API key as follows. API key equals os.environ.get, and then your polygon key is what I've named mine. Um, still installing. And while we're doing that, let's go ahead and make a class for this. Um, I always like to make classes um, for our data projects. So let's do class crypto market. We're going to initialize self and we're going to initialize these as self.api key and self.client is WebSocket client. And then we'll scoot this underneath it, pass in self, timeout, we can go ahead and erase this and then remove it from our main function here. And essentially, we're just gonna call our crypto market. So market is crypto market. And then instead of c.connect, we're gonna do market.client.connect. And then, okay, this looks like it's almost done. And once this is done installing, we'll be able to get started with this. Quite a bit of stuff. But yeah, um, this is very, very useful uh, if you wanna track crypto, stocks, forex, options, or um, indices, all of those things are available. 
still setting up the package there. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and switch environments to not kill time. But once you get all these packages installed, you're going to see this. And actually, polygon.websocket is the correct way to import the WebSocket client. And then we're going to also import market. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to say market equals market.crypto. And then API key, we're going to pass in our API key, which is self.api key. And this should get us going. So let's go ahead and put market.handle message here. Let's see if this is done yet. Still not done. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run this now. And we're connected to crypto. We need to change the T to XT. That's uh, crypto trades. And let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so the data you see coming in is real-time uh, crypto trades that are coming through the system. So a lot to work with, obviously, but where we go from here is pretty straightforward. So there's different attributes to find within this WebSocket message list. And actually, to make it easier to work with, let's go ahead and remove the list part of it. Just put WebSocket message. That way we can work with dot notation directly. So our attributes for crypto are going to be this m dot and then we have uh, pair is the currency pair so pair is m dot pair size is m dot size price is m dot price timestamp is m dot timestamp we're not going to work with the timestamp one in this one uh, we have conditions <clears throat> is m dot conditions and let's go ahead and print these Let's just print the pairs for right now. We have exchange as well. And now you see we're just getting the symbols to print out. So from here, what we're gonna do is keep defining the attributes. We had exchange, conditions, price, size, pair, what else? I think that's it for now. Um, and then we'll do the conditions. Now we're gonna have to map the conditions to a dictionary because um, they're they come in as numbers right like ones and twos so the buy side market is going to be one so self dot buy is one uh, let's just make a dictionary self dot condition dict is sell side is one buy side is two and then here what we can do now is we can say <clears throat> conditions equals self.conditiondict.get and then here we're going to do while true let's run this again let's actually print off the conditions to see if we can map them correctly and we're going to do, we're going to zero off m.conditions because it's a list but it's a single list so let's go ahead and check in out what we get We have none. What is it coming in as? Let's flip this. Let's do one buy side, two sell side. I think I had that backwards. Okay, perfect. So now we're getting the side of market uh, that's coming in. So we have buy side, sell side. Cool. So we got the conditions mapped. Um, exchanges we're gonna have to map as well uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that from a different folder here so bear with me these are webhooks in a separate EMD file um, let's go to polygon polygon where is it API's polygon mapping and these are all the maps oh sell side okay so I actually had that backwards I need to fix that so sell side um, so this is the correct way to do it. Number one is sell side, two is buy side. Let's go ahead and refresh that and then go back over here for a second and grab the rest of these that we need. Uh, crypto exchanges. Search for this. These, this is the map of crypto exchanges right here. So let's go ahead and go back here now. 
And we're going to do the same thing. Self.exchange dict is this right here. We have Coinbase, Bitfinex, Bitstamp, and Kraken. So same thing for the exchanges. We do exchange equals self.exchange dict.get m.exchange. And then we will print the pair, the exchange, and the conditions just to make sure that uh, everything's coming through correctly. Okay, so we have the exchange, the coin that's being traded, and the side of market that it's on. Awesome. So from here, basically, you're at, you know, you can do whatever you'd like to do as far as how you ever you want to analyze this. If you want to search for certain tickers, like if you only want to deal with Bitcoin and Ethereum, you could say if uh, pair in ET, ETH USD, comma BTC USD, print pair. And we should only see Ethereum and Bitcoin now. So now we're only getting the, the uh, tickers that we want to see. So cool. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to make a quick dictionary for the attributes. Attributes equals, we have, let's call it symbol as pair. We have size as size. We have price as price conditions as conditions and lastly we have exchange as exchange and from here what we're going to do is we're going to import pandas as pd and then we're going to utilize some database integration so this is where you want to need postgres so we're going to do from fudstop.apis. let's actually see if this finished that finished so let's go back to our demo environment Budstop.apis.polygon.polygon database import polygon database. And then to initialize this, we're gonna, we're gonna say db equals polygon database. And then we're going to pass in whatever user you have for your Postgres database. In my example, it's Chuck. And my database we're gonna be working with is gonna be called, I'll make a new one for this example. So let's go to the command prompt real quick. And we're going to do PSQL. This is how I connect to mine. Uh, we're gonna connect the markets real quick and we're gonna create a new database. Create database crypto. So th that database is uh, created, so now we're going to connect to it. Backslash C crypto. And now um, if I type backslash D, there's no tables currently in this uh, database, right? So that's where this package comes in. So now that we have this dictionary defined, we can go ahead and make a data frame. Data frame is pd.dataframe, attributes, and then we're going to say await db.batch insert data frame, pass in the data frame. Table name is going to be uh, crypto, well, let's just call it trades because the database is called crypto. So we're going to call it trades. The unique column is going to be insertion timestamp. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, see what happens. So I'm just gonna run this by itself and we'll see if we can get, oh, you know what? I need to connect to the database. So down here in the main function, I'm gonna say await db.connect and I'm gonna rerun this. No module name g event. I'm gonna install g event real quick. Pip install g event. Oh, and I gotta pass in an index here. So index is gonna be zero. Let's go ahead and refresh this. Okay, so you see how it automatically created the table I needed right here? So the way that this function works, the batch insert data frame, it auto creates the table for you and it also creates a history table so that if uh, the symbols comes in again, it's gonna give you a historic uh, database to look at for it. So now if we go back to our command prompt and we hit slash, or let's connect again, crypto, and then we're going to say backslash D. Oh, whoops, I need to pass in the right table, or right database rather. So let's go ahead and bring this down for a sec. 
database crypto user Chuck. That should have worked. I may have to go back to my, uh, let's, let's go to markets. Okay, so there's crypto right there. It did, it did come in on this database. But anyways, if we go and we look at it now, D crypto. No, that's not the right one. Huh, let's do C crypto and then look at this. No relations. I'm gonna try to refresh this real quick. Let me try to connect to market uh, to markets again, and then D was trades in there. Oh, okay, let's do trades. So D trades. Okay, there it is. So yeah, I created it under the uh, markets database. So if you're using this, you might want to create the database called markets. That way, it'll know where to insert it. But this is the database right here. So now, if we want to query it, um, we can do select star from trades. And then there's all of the trades that have been coming in. So pretty cool stuff. And then from here, obviously we can do, you know, whatever we want as far, we can organize it however we want. Uh, we can search specifically for certain things. And we can do this all from our program here uh, by calling a few more functions. So this will indefinitely keep storing crypto messages as they come in into the database. And then from here, we can query it, right? So let's go ahead and do Query equals F string with three quotes on each side. We're going to do select everything from trades where pair equals BTC USD. And then we're going to call a function with records equals await DB dot fetch iter. And then we're going to pass in the query. Then we're going to print out the records now. And let's actually uh, organize this by insertion timestamp. Order by insertion timestamp descending. And then let's refresh this. Oh, getting, getting a problem. Oh, okay, so this is a generator, sorry. So async for record in db.fetch iter. We pass in the query, then we print out the record. It's gonna print one record at a time based on the last insertion timestamp. So it should be a similar look as to what we saw coming in a minute ago. What's the problem now? Column pair does not exist. Right, right, right. We named it symbol, right? Was it symbol? Yes, it was symbol. So these are all the records from the database and it should reflect almost, you know, like it looks like the same as when we first started this and just started the Polygon database from or Polygon stream from uh, the beginning. But the difference is this is within our own database stored on our OS. So if we wanted to do something like this, let's do select everything from trades where symbol, let's do, let's not do symbol, let's do where size is greater than, let's do 50. No, let's do, where symbol equals BTC USD and size equals one. We'll see if anybody's buying one whole Bitcoin. And then obviously from here you can work with things like the RSI and, and do RSI scans and things like that. So the, the sky really is the limit here. I mean, whatever you can think of, um, you can do. We can actually engineer a new attribute on top of this. So we can do dollar cost. So dollar cost equals float size times price. And then we'll pass in dollar cost. And then we're going to go ahead and add it to our table. So alter, alter table trades, add column dollar cost type double precision. No, oh, you don't use the type in there, so you gotta erase type. Okay, so we added the table, or the uh, column to uh, trades. We also need to add it to the trades history table, add column dollar cost, 
Whoops, erase the type again. Okay, what's the issue here? Okay, so we, we changed the configuration, which is why this is happening. So now we're gonna refresh and we can search for dollar costs now. So we're gonna do word symbol. Let's just not do a symbol. Let's just look for dollar cost trades of more than $500. Where dollar cost is greater than 500 and we don't need the size. So this should only print us records now that are going to be uh, trades of 500 or more. So all of these coming in are $500 or more of value in trades. Let's just print the dollar cost out just to verify that it is correct. Okay, so that's a lot of money moving through the markets right now, right? So basically what we can do now is we can say ticker is record symbol, dollar cost is record dollar cost, price is record price, size record size. So now we can do if dollar cost and we can do this without the database. We don't actually need to do this because we're already filtering from the query. Um, but what we can do now is we can say total dollars equals here and then symbols, empty list there. And then we can say total dollars dot append dollar cost and then symbols dot append symbol or ticker. And now we can just print off total dollars and we can print off symbols. Holy cow, that's a lot of stuff. Let's do let's do XRP where symbol equals XRP USD and dollar cost is greater than 500. Let's see if anybody's buying XRP for more than 500 right now. Oh yeah. I think I need to take this wild true out of here. Sick. So yeah, I mean that's basically just a start, but that's the crypto market. Um, probably the easiest one to get started with. But uh, yeah, from here, I mean you can add an RSI scans, whatever you want. And that's all that stuff's available in the FUD stuff package. So uh, yeah, I hope this one helped somebody. Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to help. Again, I, I do this all day, every day. I work with tons of stuff. Um, so yeah, I um, hope this helped. Y'all have a good one.